So one more piece of equipment that I'm going to show you. And these are really, really dangerous. These are cones. I kept the covers, the cardboard that came with them, because they're really, really, really dangerous. For cones, you want to have a fairly long stapled fiber. I'm going to grab some Rommeldale. This stuff has some VM contamination. Here is an example of some roving that I dizzed off of my combs. I'm going to do a very, very small example. And I'm going to stand at an angle for two reasons. One, I think it'll be better for you guys. And two, I've got my little one right behind me. And I have never combed around my children. I just don't do it. It's so dangerous. But she's in quite a mood today and just does not want to leave my set. So we're going to do the best that we can. So I'm pulling this apart to make it easier to load onto my combs. Now I have the clamp base to hook it to the table and when I comb that's what I do because it's very very tiring. It's, it's for me it's hard on my hands and it's not, it's not my favorite thing to do by far. It's time consuming and it's tedious but if you want that particular result it is definitely worth it. And for removing VM from a fleece, that's this has some alfalfa in it. And these are worth their weight in gold for removing VM. So I'm going to remove the cover from one of the combs. And look at those bad boys. Yowza. Those will do some damage. I have poked myself on these. They're very sharp. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this. I think it's a better way for a consistent result, but you could just whoosh, whoosh, lash on randomly. I'm going to take the cut ends and just place them onto the comb. So here we've got the cut ends. I'm going to place them on the comb just across the bottom. This takes a little bit more time than just sort of lashing it on. Hold it up here. So I'm just going to. Place it on the comb. Across the bottom. Um, <clears throat> you can fill, if you're filling your combs snugly, you can fill it about a third of the way and then puff it up. If you're filling it with a, a, lightly and leaving some space there to, for them to breathe, you can fill it up about halfway. I wouldn't fill it much more than that because it gets hard to comb and um, it'll puff up a bit as you comb it and <laughs> try to come off the top of your comb. So, apologies for this taking a bit, but I do want to get the comb ends Now, <clears throat> the reason that I'm doing all the cut ends on this is that I watched this video and the woman in the video was talking about how the end that goes into the fiber is the tucked in end. So when you get commercially prepared top, it doesn't really matter because those, those have already been, they're all curvy scurvy going frontwards and backwards. But if you're hand combing and you can get all your fiber going in one direction, for that worsted spin you're going to get a smoother finish than if your ends are going backwards and forwards because the end that's getting fed in is the end that's going to be tucked in. And if you have your cut end, it's gonna, not going to be as soft. And these, this it's like a negligible difference. If it's a super fine fiber, it's going to be soft anyways. But I mean, that's just one of those little extra nitpicky things that you could do. I might have that backwards. It might be the tip end. I don't know. I don't remember. But that was the point. So you just want to catch the tips of your fiber and pull away. Now you can see I'm doing this slowly, but it is taking some muscle strength. Now you can go in different directions. 
I don't want to come towards myself. I usually do this clamp to a table so I can go any direction and none of it's towards me. Um, this is, you now you can see the fiber really wants to stick to the things. It's just kind of, combing is a static deal. I don't, I don't know why. I don't have this problem with hand carving so much. Um, and they both use metal tines, much friction. So I don't know. So what you're going to do is you're going to comb this until you feel like... Hey, Mommy. Yes, baby. We're almost done doing this video. Yep. You're going to comb it until you've got it pretty much all onto the other comb. Take off your little bit of waste. So you can save that to card. And then you can comb this again a couple of times. I'm just going to do it the one time for purposes of the video. Now I'm going to puff it up. You can see in the back it's all packed down, so I'm going to puff it up. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to diz off. Now you can see, I just put a tiny bit of fiber on there, and in order to puff it up to diz it off, look how full the comb is. So, you don't want to put too much on there, or you're going to end up hating life when you try to pull it off. I have a bunch of dizzes. I'm a Diz nerd. This is my favorite one. I bought it at a bead store. Yeah, a bead store. It's this beautiful stone. It's got a tiny hole drilled in it to use it as a pendant. Um, it broke. This threading tool is a dental floss thing for people with braces. And I have bought one box of these, and there's still a bunch of things. Um, so I put the tip end through. I catch a little bit of the fiber on my comb at, at the top corner. You can start at the bottom corner if you'd like. I just wouldn't advise starting in the middle, because then you're not going to make it all the way back across your comb. Then you're going to pull the fiber through the dizz. Okay? this up on this box so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. I have limited space in this room. So then what you're going to do is you're going to gently pull right the fiber there, and then scoot your disc back. Pull, you draft in here and pull the fiber through the disc. Now you never want to pull so much fiber that your it gets jammed in your disc. If it's going to have a natural feel about it. One of the things is how far you draft out. If you don't draft out far enough for the length of your staple, it's going to be chunky. And what I'm doing is I'm gently moving across the face of the comb in order for the fibers to grab neighboring fibers and pull them off along the way. So you would do this coming to the other side. And then I'll start to gently and slowly move down the comb to the next layer and back across the comb this way. And when you when you push your diz in, you want to make sure you snug it up to where the fibers are, otherwise you're going to end up with real thin spots. And you would keep going in this method back and forth across the comb until you had all of your fiber dizzed off into a beautiful top. I'm just going to break this off here and show you guys that. That is going to spin like a dream. I don't do 